Okay, this is Kate. As one of you suggest that I should do the specimen paper, paper three. Well, it was such a good idea. It's such a reasonable thing to do. I don't know why I didn't thought of doing it, but uh, here we go. Uh, it's also my first time reading this. I never uh, thought about actually doing it. Okay, you inscribe, circumscribe, polygon in the circle. Uh, yeah, that's how you approximate apply. Well, that's not how you do it. That's how Archimedean did it. Uh, considered a equilateral triangle. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Divide it into three isosceles triangle, each with angle two pi over three. Okay. Use triangle trigonometry so that the perimeter is three with three. Oh, so I'm finding x, right? Because if I know x, then the perimeter of the triangle is just three times of that. And uh, right angled trigonometry or otherwise. Do you guys mind if I just do otherwise? Uh, I mean, we could use cosine rule, but they suggest right angle. Okay, let's do right angle. So this angle is now pi over three. So, and this is x over two. That's pretty obvious, right? So psi, pi over three, equal to x over two over one, opposite side of hypotenuse. Psi 60, that's like root three over two. So x is root three. And therefore, the perimeter of the whole equilateral triangle would be three times of that. Then consider a squared inscribed. I need to draw it myself, right? Consider a squared inscribed in a circle radius one. When dividing into four, find the perimeter of the square. So let's do it myself. Well, that's a horrible circle. Then we do a square. Okay, imagine there's a square. So x, the radius is one. So this is one, one. This is a right angle. So x should be easy to find. X is Pythagoras theorem. X is root two. Therefore, the perimeter is four times root two. <coughs> Okay, so far so good. Now, find the, find the hexagon this time. Okay, that makes sense. That's probably exactly what Archimedes did. <laughs> like what, 2000 years ago? Like that. So let me cut it. So there's one, one. That angle is two pi over six. So pi over three. Uh, we'll keep using right angle trigonometry, I guess. So cut it in half. Uh, Actually, I'm not sure if I want to do that because then psi. If I cut it in half, it will become uh, 15 degree. 15 is not special. So I guess cosine rule is a better choice this time. So don't cut in half. So maybe cosine rule is a better choice. So we call it x squared equal 1 square plus 1 square minus 2 times 1 times 1 times cosine pi over 3 so this is 2 minus 2 cosine 60 is a half I think cosine 60 so 2 minus 1 is 1 oh right of course it's a hexagon they are equilateral triangles if you cut it like this ah uh, of course they are, so the perimeter is 6. Okay, so that the perimeter is that. 
Uh, yeah, this is not helpful at all. Hexagon. You cut it like that. The triangle is equilateral. That's why it's too much. Okay, okay. Okay, so if you cut it to be n sided, then the angle here is 2 pi for n. If you further cut that in half, that's pi over n, right angle, and the radius is 1. So if this is x, then sine x over 2. So I guess we should call that that the length of one side be x so then psi uh, pi over n would equal to x over 2 over 1 therefore x is 2 times of psi pi over 2 therefore p i what does that i stand for? The I have nothing. The I have no meaning, right? Like there is no. The in, in the definition, I didn't show up. Right, well, that's interesting. <clears throat> Would be n times of that. Use the appropriate macron series to find that and interpret this geometrically okay so the macron series of sine let me look for the formula booklet so macron series of sine x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial, so on and so forth. Yeah, so psi are all the odd one, and uh, positive, negative. Alternatively, find the limit. Okay. So we have psi pi over n So we have pi over n minus pi over n cubed over 3 factorial pi over n fifth to the 5 factorial minus I don't see okay I can't see what we are trying to do yet so it's 2n times that so if you multiply the first term by 2n, you get 2 pi. If you multiply the second thing by 2n, is minus 2 pi cubed over n squared 3 factorial. Right, because the n needs to be raised to the power of 3, but then you multiplied another n to it, so one of the n cancel out. And then plus, so the next one will be 2 pi to the power of 5 over n to the power of 4, three, uh, 5 factorial. Okay, please don't tell me the answer is just 2 pi, and therefore the perimeter of a circle of radius 1 is 2 pi, I mean. We don't, Archimedes didn't do all this to figure that out, all right? He actually found a really good estimate of pi, limit of angle to infinity. No, just two pi because uh, all this have n powers in the bottom. Oh, so this is the circumference of a circle of radius 1 brah 
We don't need to do this to know that. Well, okay, we'll take that. Okay, now I guess we're doing circumscribed. Start with a equilateral triangle. Oh, the I is for inscribed. Because now circumscribed C. PC is the parameter. Um, this time directly go to the nth case. Okay, that might take some thinking. Save a circle. And you have a n-sided polygon. So like this is two of the sides and you have a total of n sides. So this is X, this is also X. Uh, so we can like, we can like cut this open. So cut this in half. Uh, what would be that angle? If I do it here, Each of them is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So there's two power for six. So it's two power for six if it's three sided. So if it's n sided, let's use a different color. So if it's n sided, this should be two pi over two n. This angle is two pi over two n. Now this side is circumscribed to the circle, so it's a tangent line to the circle, so this is a right angle. Alright, and again if x is the length of one side, this is x over 2, this bit here is x over 2. Right, because like if this whole line is x, if this whole line is x, then the way I cut it, this is only half of x. Okay, it's half of a side and the radius is one that means this is one this side is one this is the right angle because the picture is horrible but you should be able to see that this is tangent so tangent the two cancel out pi over n would equal to x over two over one therefore x is two tangent pi over n and therefore, PCN is 2N tangent pi over n. Okay, so proved. Uh, do that, find a limit. What, can we do L'Hopital? Are we allowed to do L'Hopital? Well, on the other hand, there's no Macron series for tangent, which means we have no choice but to use take uh, Lapidus rule. This is zero over zero case because when n go to infinity, when n go to infinity, this is this will be close to zero, but tangent zero is zero. Okay, and obviously the bottom is also zero. Limit. Would be the same as differentiating both the top and bottom with respect to n. We're treating n as the unknown. If we differentiate tangent, we get secant square, that thing, times differentiate the inside. The inside would be treated as pi n minus one, so it's minus pi n minus two. And then differentiate the bottom, the bottom is n to the power of minus one, so it's minus n minus two. Oh, that's nice, they cancel out. Let's see if this limit 
exists, the negative also cancel out, so it's 2 pi secant squared pi over n. Well, the answer is supposed to be 2 pi again, right? <laughs> okay, so when n go to infinity, we have 1 over cosine squared n of pi over n, so it's 2 pi. That. So pi over n when angle to infinity is 0, cosine 0 is 1, so that's 1 over 1, so it's 2 pi. So again, the perimeter of a circle of radius 1 is 2 pi. Use the result to determine an inequality for the value of pi. Okay. Okay, part D, which one is part D? D is this. So the idea is this. For the part D, that's an inscribe. And if you inscribe the perimeter of the polygon inside the circle, the perimeter of this should be smaller than the actual circumference of the circle. So the answer of part D is 2n sine pi over n that should be less than 2 pi because the actual circumference circumference 2 pi and the inscribe is smaller while the circumscribed one this one is outside like this so we divide 2 on both sides so this is what Trimity actually do. I guess that's it, right? I mean, this is the problem of paper three. I mean, it's unclear uh, if this is the final answer. It's a bit of a guessing game, and it'll be nice if you can write more to explain yourself, especially in all the proofs. Like, I was being lazy, didn't write out everything. Most of the stuff, I only say it in words but maybe to be safe you want to write down your reasoning when you do it so inequality found in part h can be used to determine the lower bound and upper bound for the approximate value of n uh, of pi yeah that's what historically how they do it determine the least value of n so that the upper bound and lower bound approximation out within 0 0.05 of pi. But that's not a pretty thing to do. Sounds like we need to use the GDC to do that. Uh, do we just graph it to see? I mean... So this is the lower bound, and to be 0 0.005 less than pi was the, so the accurate value of pi is pi. According to the GDC, I need to get, I need to get something similar to like 3.136593, so and then what, graph it? Remember to change your calculator to radian. X times psi bracket pi by pi over n. Okay, thanks. We'll graph that, I guess. And also graph 3. 3.136593. And I plot it. Oh, where's this good with that psi? Okay, I think we need to zoom in there a bit. Access, X minimum maybe eight, X maximum. I, I really don't know. I don't know if I need a hundred psi or not. So we're gonna zoom in to that. So three and 3.14, I guess. Boom. Okay, I see the intersection there. 
So I get the intersection. And calculate intersection is thirty two point one. So and need to be at least thirty one point four two. So at least thirty three for the lower bound to be within zero point zero five. Then we do the same for the upper bound. So we change the function up to attention. Oh, that was response. And then upper bound will this time be pi plus 0 0.005. Uh, this time I need the y to be a bit higher there. Again, intersection. Three point one four six six right. So n is forty five point five. So I'll need n to be at least forty six in order for both the upper bound and the lower bound to be within zero point zero zero five. Okay. Let's see for question one. Uh, how do I think? I don't think it's too hard. Uh, but I don't think it's very meaningful. They, the fact that at the end we need to use a calculator and all the macron series and L'Hopital rules to do this. I mean, back in the days when Archimedes first do it, he has none of those. He doesn't even have a simple calculator. The fact that he could steal approximate pi to like, I think he did a 24 sided polygon or something. It was amazing, right? So uh, I'm just saying historically, it was way more impressive than this, but uh, but I, I think it's good that it's not too hard, right? So let's go question two. Uh, property of the sequence. So it's a sequence. Okay, sketching the graph, you know, required to find uh, any coordinates or any stationary points. Draw F1 and F3. Uh, I'm running out of space, y'all. Uh, let's move this around. Okay, F1. F1 is, an, is when n is 1, so you have cosine 1, arc cosine x, for x being between minus 1 and 1. So cosine arc cosine cancel out, so this is just x. So the graph would be going from minus 1 to 1, just x, basically that. That's minus one, that's one. Then F3. So uh, I don't think that's something I can draw uh, by hand. Three of uh, cos x. So we'll use a GTC. So is cosine bracket. 3 arc cos x uh, let's see how the graph look like yeah my domain is totally wrong is minus 1 to 1 for x uh, if you cosine something uh, also, it's in between minus 1 to 1, so minus 1, 1 should do. Uh, yeah, my calculator is like a bit too...
you know the boundary you cannot show exactly the boundary so let's do a bit more uh, I believe there's a one yeah if you go down there go to the lowest point it's basically minus one yeah okay so the graph like this is it on the same axis or what on the same set of axes Ooh, uh, top is one uh, let, let's draw f3 first okay so 0 0.5 is roughly to the right of that so let's see it's this you go through 0 0 and then uh, probably up to 1 this this is uh, f3 y equal to f3x while f1x is just a straight line so the red one is f1x okay for the odd values when m bigger than 2 use the GDC to systematically vary the value of n hence suggest an expression for the odd value of n describing in terms of n the number of maximum point well okay we did three so now we go outside so three have one maximum by the way so when n is three there's one there's one so there's This suggests we systematically change it to the next odd number, so I get it's five. So the two maximum. Basically, it was also one minimum and then two minimum. Uh, I guess that's the pattern, right? Let's do one more. Hey, what am I doing? Uh, again, I'm not that good with this. Uh, GDC. It's just nice on the iPad. Uh, okay, so as predicted, there is seven. Uh, when, when it's seven, there's three maximum, three minimum. So for odd number of N, the number of maximum is basically n minus 1 divided by 2. Uh, well, the minimum is also n minus 1 divided by 2. Okay. Okay, then next we're supposed to draw 2 and 4. Okay. So after dealing with odd, we're supposed to do even, right? Two. Uh, let's see. So again, the graph go from one, one, one minus one minus one one. Uh, go like this. Okay, touching minus one. That is f two x. And for four, go through zero point four so like this. Like that. Okay, number of maximum minimum. Uh when it was two. How many maximum minimum were there? There is one minimum but no maximum. So it's one minimum but no maximum. But when n is four, there is one maximum but two minimum. Right? So I guess we will try the next one. Uh, 
six. It seems like this pattern is a bit more complicated than the odd one. This time with two maximum and three minimum. And then Let's do one more. This time we have, okay, so the pattern is quite obvious now. So the number of minimum is just n over two, right, divided by two. Uh, the number of maximum seems to be one less than that. So it's n over two minus one. Okay, solve the equation f prime x equal to zero and show that the stationary points occur where? Oh, okay. So we need to find the derivative. F nx is cosine n uh, arc cos x. So we'll need the derivative of arc cos i. I believe that's in the form of a booklet. Here, okay. In the booklet, it says that the derivative of arc cosine is negative one over square root one minus x square. Okay, so you're supposed to know how to prove that, but we don't need to prove it here. Uh, differentiate cosine is negative sine. Copy the inside times differentiate the inside, and just stay there. Uh, times differentiate arc cosine. Differentiate arc cosine is what I mentioned. So you want this equal to zero. So then obviously you multiply the bottom to the right, becomes zero uh, right away. You divide n away as well, and it's a number, not zero. And then the negative, negative cancel out, so you end up having sine and arc cosine x equal to zero okay when is sine zero right sine is zero when it's zero uh, pi two pi so on and so forth And so what do you want? Occur when x equal to cosine k pi over n. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what it is. So our cosine n equals to k pi, where k is any integers. Well, because uh, technically it doesn't have to be pi. It could be negative pi. It could be plus minus two pi, so on and so forth, right? So k literally could be any integers, including zero including negative. Uh, is that what they give? Yeah, so at this point, k could be uh, both positive and negative. And then you divide the n. All right, and you cosine it. Okay. Now, but if you look at the question again, it says k uh, only need to be positive. Uh, I think the reason is that if you cosine the scene, if you cosine a negative number, it's the same as uh, just cosine the positive number, right? So the fact that even if k is positive, like that's not very useful. Therefore, they excluded all the k's when k is negative. Okay, so it's enough to take k to be the positive. Another thing is that uh, if you draw a cosine graph, cosine is basically symmetric of the line x equal to pi. Therefore, there is really no need to like if, if k is bigger than n, if k is bigger than n, then the number you, the angle inside would be bigger than pi. 
But then the, the, when you cosine that, the value you get will be the same as some corresponding value of k, where k is less than n. They will give you the same x value. Right? They will give you the same this value. Therefore, there is also no need to consider when k is bigger than n. Okay, so it's also enough to consider k being less than n. Okay, lastly, lastly, can k be 0? Right, if you think about it, cosine 0, if k is 0, then you have cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1, okay? 1 happens to be the boundary of your graph, okay? Usually we don't count your boundary as a maximum or minimum, so one is also not included. So that's why k also cannot be zero, okay? So from the steps, there is really no condition saying uh, k must be positive, but if you think about it deeply, you will see that just restricting k to be positive is enough okay so that's why okay next the sequence could actually be expressed as a polynomial polynomial means there's only x and power of x's so no no psi cosi or any other stuff uh, use an identity to find f2. Well, that's obvious. Double angle formula, right? So f2. Let's do it here. F2x. According to the definition, is cosine two. Ah, uh, cosine x. So uh, that's why I think this is obvious. This is double angle because if you treat a uh, cosine as the angle, then this is two times the angled. And uh, I think it should also be obvious that you choose the version that only have cosine in it. So it is 2 cosine squared the angle minus 1. The angle is arc cosine x. Uh, you obviously do this because cosine arc cosine we cancel out. So it's 2x squared. Square is the square. Minus 1. So that's it. Then consider f n plus 1. So uh, it's basically the same f, right? He just replaced n by n plus 1, so obviously uh, it would still be this. They almost basically, they, they basically don't need to say this, okay? Uh, because by definition, it is what it is. They want you to use some appropriate identity to do this, okay? Okay. That should also be obvious. That's the compound angle formula. So, uh, I mean, if this specimen is really indicative of how the actual paper three will look like, I think they are just a even longer section B questions, right? So it's even longer. And also, uh, it, it could also be, going across more topics, right? Usually in a normal section B long question, you may see like two different topics get mixed together. Here you may see even more topics got mixing together, but it's still not horribly different or horribly difficult. Uh, at least that's my opinion. So this, this really have the feeling of a induction problem, right? So almost they can uh, they can almost give you this and then you can prove it by induction or something. Uh, have that kind of feeling. If you have learned something called reduction formula, this also have the feeling of an in reduction formula. Uh, so these aren't horribly difficult stuff. So by definition, f n plus one. So it's actually the definition is where I cross it out. Is n plus one arc cos x. Now what you do is you expand the inside, so it's n arc cos x plus 
arc cos x. And then you use the compound angle formula. This is your A and this is your B. So this is cosine A plus B. Cosine A plus B should be cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B okay is that basically this uh, yes that's it okay so again they're not terribly uh, difficult like they chop the steps into really small steps so yeah lastly so I guess this is the hardest part HI because HII is a direct application of HI so I don't think II is difficult so it's just II So we need to find Fn plus 1 plus Fn minus 1. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I don't have much space. But uh, I guess I'll do it below. So, so I'm guessing we will also find Fn minus 1 in a very similar way. So by definition, Fn minus 1 would be cosine bracket n minus 1 arc cosine x I mean my handwriting are quite troubling but I hope you can basically almost guess what I'm writing then we do the same thing this is cosine a minus b compound angle formula so it's cosine so I use blue so this time is cosine A, cosine B, plus sine A, sine B. All right, then what do we do? Then we add them up. Then we add them up. Okay, so therefore F n plus 1 plus f a minus 1 would be now when we add this up should be obvious that the sine parts would cancel out because you have minus it plus uh, plus a positive of it of the same thing so they cancel out and even the cosine bit are actually the same so it's just two times of that so it's two times of cosine and arc cosine x cosine arc cosine x and then obviously cosine arc cosine x is just x okay I don't want to copy anymore so I would just put an x there so the x I put it in front so 2x and then this cosine and arc sine by definition is is f and x that's the proof okay so it's also not uh, horribly difficult and so we are supposed to find F3 uh, now first you need to realize you know F2 okay and it should be obvious that we also know F1 because F1 is just X right F1 would be cosine n is 1, so it's cosine 1 arc cosine x, so it's just x, okay? So you know f2, you know f1, and you're looking for f3. In that case, it should be obvious that you take n plus 1 to be 3, because if n plus 1 is 3, then n is 2, n is 2, and n, n is 2? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And then n minus 1 is 1. Okay, makes sense, right? And we have f2, we have F1, so we will be able to find F3, okay? 
So we know, where should I do it? I should do it here. We know f3x would plus f1x would equal to 2 times x of f2x due to the formula we just proved. So f3x plus x, because f1x is x, would equal to 2x times f2x, which was found here. So it's 2x squared minus 1. So f3x is really, let's expand that, 4x cubed minus 2x minus another x, right? So you minus 3x. Okay. And if you can recognize this, this is obviously the triple angle formula. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's not relevant. So that's it. Uh, this is the solution. This is my solution to paper three. I do think some of the parts are tricky, but uh, but anyhow, there's nothing you can do to prepare for paper three, right? Because it's more like a super long uh, section B question than something horrible and new. Okay, so I don't think you need to panic too much. Just uh, keep in mind that you might need to use a lot of cross topic knowledge in even the same question. Okay, I hope this helped and wish you all the best for your IB exam. And please consider subscribing. Good luck.